to begin the session. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, yeah, welcome to experience it, learn it, use it. Um, this is the 15th in our series of professional development webinars where you, the teacher, become the student. So yeah, we've done 15 of these already. It's amazing, time seems to go very quickly. Um, so today um, you will learn teaching tips and ideas uh, through taking part in a real National Geographic learning lesson uh, because we believe that the best way to learn something is by doing it. Uh, let me introduce myself. So my name is Will Lashett and I am a teacher trainer for National Geographic Learning. I am originally from the UK, but I now live in Singapore and I've been uh, living, teaching and training in English language teaching in Asia since 2001. Will, can you check with the teachers whether they can see your screen because I oh. cannot. You can't, I know why, because I have it paused. <laughs> okay, let me resume. Thank you, Kitty. Uh, here we go. There we go. Can we see now? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Great. Okay, perfect. Uh, before okay. I can see, but now disappear again. Now disappear again. Uh, it should be working now. I'm, I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, we can see the screen okay. now. Great, perfect. Okay. All right, so uh, let me introduce uh, today's lesson. So today's lesson is a vocabulary lesson and it's called Entertain Me and it is from um, our uh, title called Perspectives. So Perspectives is for older teenagers or young adults, uh, which means basically high school students, upper secondary, uh, college or university students. So while we're talking about that, the different kinds of uh, students that you might be teaching, um, we do this every week, but I would just like to get an idea for who is here today. Um, so can you please, you should be able to see now a question up on the screen. Um, I'd like you just to select all of those age ranges that you teach or that you currently teach. So you can, uh, you can pick more than one. If you teach, for example, teenagers and adults, please select both. Okay, so I'll just give a few more seconds just to see who, who we've got here. All right, and about 80% of you have voted. Okay, so I'm gonna end the polling and share the results. So we can see, that's great. So we've got um, almost 60% of you are teaching teenagers, and we've got uh, almost half young learners and about um, one fifth are teaching adults. And also one fifth of you are not teachers. That's interesting. That's a higher proportion than we normally get. Um, but we can see here that the majority of you are teaching teenagers. So um, that is, as I just mentioned, really the target uh, audience for perspectives is that kind of higher teenage, uh, older teenagers and young adult market. Okay, perfect, let's have a look, let's move on. Okay, so we're gonna get straight into the lesson today and um, I'm gonna start off by showing you, uh, this is the unit opener from unit nine and from level two of perspectives. So level two of perspectives is for a kind of a B1 uh, to B2 level. And what the unit, what unit opener is, is it's using this beautiful photo. So every unit has a high impact photo like this to introduce the theme. So I'd just like you to type into the chat box for me, um, what, what do you see? What can you see here in the picture? So any comments at all into the chat box? Uh, Wahyu says dancers. Okay, very good. So we've got dancers. Um, anything else? What? What? Someone give me a little bit of description. A cute crown. Interesting costumes. Festive costumes. Cool headpieces. Performers. Uh, Roderick says it's a festival. A carnival costume. We've got makeup. Okay, great. So we've got lots of interesting ideas there. Um, who? Who do you think these people are? So we had a couple of idea uh, performers. Um, so what? What kind of performers? 
um, what kind of performance do you think they might be doing? Yes, we've got here dancers, theatre. Okay, Ami says theatre, a parade, Eva. So we've got lots of different uh, acrobatic dance, carnival. Okay, perfect. Um, so uh, some good guesses there. And um, one of you did get it right. Um, I'm going to show you the title. Um, so this is actually uh, the name of the thing they are performing. Um, I don't know if anyone recognizes this, Titus Andronicus. Does that mean anything to anybody? Does anyone recognize it? It, it, right, Shakespeare, there we go. Okay, right, so Michael. Okay, that's uh, a point to you, Michael. Um, yeah, Titus Andronicus is the name of a Shakespeare play. So um, let's get his name up there. So William Shakespeare. So these are, um, these are performers uh, who uh, do a performance of a Shakespeare play. Does anyone know the name of any other Shakespeare plays? Have you heard of any other ones apart from Titus Andronicus, which is obviously not the most famous one? Can anyone think of the name? There's one very famous one there we go, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Okay, probably the most famous one. So Romeo and Juliet and Titus Andronicus, they are both uh, the same type of play. So when we talk about um, Shakespeare plays, we have two types, which are comedies and tragedies. And Romeo and Juliet and Titus Andronicus are both the same type. If you look at the performers' faces in here, if you look at their costumes, look at their faces, do you think that this play is a comedy or a tragedy? Uh, she thinks it's a comedy, okay, um, and most of you are putting tragedy here. So you put tragedy, why do you think it's a tragedy? Someone's put a tragic comedy, Ami says a tragic comedy. Um, why do we think sad faces? There we go, right? So we've got kind of sad, solemn, that's a very nice word. We've got solemn expressions here on the performers' faces. Okay, that's right. So um, let's see, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions um, about, uh, about this uh, tragedy and about the uh, performers here. So look at the costumes. Some of you have mentioned the amazing crowns and the makeup. So do you think that these costumes are typical for a traditional Shakespeare play? Do you think these are the normal kind of costumes you will see in Shakespeare? So Annie says no, no, and you're right, they're, they're, not, they're not the normal kinds of costumes. So why do you think they might be dressed like this? So they're dressed very differently. I thought it's Beijing Opera, Roderick, very interesting. And actually uh, the performers here, they are from China. So it is a Chinese, um, theatre group. Um, some of you today might be here uh, from WeChat. Um, this Chinese, uh, this Chinese theatre group are called We Act. Um, and yeah, you're absolutely right. They're putting a unique spin on the play, so they're adapting it, um, and they are putting their own kind of uh, spin. They're putting their own character and their own creativity into an old, you know, very, very old play um, to make it their own and to adapt it. That's exactly right. Um, so this actually, some of you, one of you mentioned it earlier, it's from an arts festival. So this is actually from the Edinburgh Festival in Scotland, which is, um, I think, the biggest arts festival in the world. Um, I'm just wondering if any of you have been to any kind of arts festival before. Maybe in your country, uh, or maybe you've maybe you've travelled to another country to go to one. Is this is this an idea that you're familiar with? This idea of an arts festival where people come from different countries to put on different types of entertainment. So Miss Dodo says not yet, but that suggests to me you would like to go in the future. Annie hasn't either. Um, you know, so perhaps, um, you know, perhaps this is something that um, not many people have done. Okay, Leah has been to the carnival in Brazil. Renee says, unfortunately, no. Um, so for me, I, I actually went to Edinburgh Festival uh, a couple of years ago. It was my first time to experience it, and it was amazing. Um, but as I can see from your responses, it's not something perhaps that 
um, most people have done and certainly not something that most of our younger you know teenage or young adult students will have been to um, so it's nice to have a look at this kind of picture to kind of um, you know raise a bit of awareness about um, what um, you know what there is going on around the world um, but also we need to make sure the lesson is not too heavily based on that so that students can still have something to identify with Okay, let's go. Oh, by the way, um, I should mention, uh, yeah, I, I mentioned this already. So this is uh, the cast members from a Chinese We Act theatre group. And um, Titus Andronicus is the Shakespeare's first and bloodiest tragedy. Um, and this was performed in tw 2015 in Edinburgh. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at the first activity, the first um, vocabulary activity in this lesson entertain me and it's a vocabulary uh, sorry a personalization activity and we know that because it says here my perspective so all of the personalization activities in um, perspectives are called my perspective um, and there's something that I really like about this something that's a bit unusual um, is it actually it gives students a choice so students will be working in pairs and as you can see it says discuss three of these questions but you can also see there are actually four questions there um, if time was an issue for you in your class um, you could even change this to discuss two of these questions um, and I think it you know, it's very common for, for my students, certainly, when I give them an activity, they always just go straight to question one and they start working their way down the list, you know, regardless of how interesting the find they, they find the questions or regardless of, you know, whether they have anything to say or not. So I think this kind of activity, very simple, just giving them a choice, it makes them read the questions first and it makes them evaluate them and pick the ones that they would rather answer. So this is important because we're giving the student some ownership of the task. Um, we can also tell them you don't need to answer them in the same order that you see them there. You know, you can make this activity your own. You can discuss it in any way you wish. Um, and I also think you could make this part of the task itself. So if you put students into groups and you tell them, okay, I only want you to discuss two of these questions and part of the task therefore is discussing and negotiating and agreeing in the group which questions they want to answer. And this kind of negotiation task has real world applications, uh, arguing a point, justifying your reasons, you know, listening to other people's points of view, you know, and it's something that um, they will need to have experience in when they go out and they get a job, okay, later on in life. So that's an activity that I like to do with my students. And of course, when, when they've chosen them themselves, as I mentioned, they are more interested in the questions. Okay, so let's have a look um, at, at the four questions here. Um, and we can see that each of these four questions has a, a different purpose. So if we look at question one, um, you know, is this something you would enjoy watching? Have you seen similar performances? So this is asking them to draw on their personal experience. It's also asking them to make assumptions and to use their imagination a little bit. If we look at question two, what forms of entertainment do you enjoy? Um, this is talking about likes or dislikes. And if we make sure we always tell them they have to explain why, then they're going to be working on making justifications for, you know, for what they like or don't like. So different skill being practiced there. Uh, question number three, um, where can you see art and entertainment in your area? This is about describing um, their own lives, okay, their uh, you know, real life. And the last question, question four, the advantages and disadvantages of live performances over recorded ones watching at home. This is asking them to analyze, to compare and to contrast. So we can see that all four of these questions have different purposes um, and that's why it's a good mix of questions. So I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say we only had time for two of these questions. I would like you to type into the chat box, uh, which two of these questions would you uh, choose to ask and to answer? Okay, so if you can only choose two, which two would you choose and why? And if you could put your answers in the chat box, that would be great. Uh, I can see Geraldine has put the questions are thought provoking, which makes them interesting. And you're right, Geraldine, that, that is a very important point. So from the four questions, uh, Arlene has chosen two and four. 
So which forms of entertainment do you enjoy and the advantages and disadvantages? Two and four. Um, Chi has chosen one and two. Okay, two and four, one and four. Okay, and it's interesting that so far nobody has chosen number three. Um, and, and that actually is something interesting. Uh, someone just did choose it uh, because I found in the past that a lot of my students don't have much experience with art and live entertainment. So it does tend to be something they find difficult to talk about, um, which is why for me, I would rather give them that choice if they talk about it rather than trying to force them to talk about it. Um, a lot of you have chosen two and four, which are exactly the two I would choose. Um, I think if I could only choose two, I would choose two and four. I think it gives a good mix um, of talking about their personal experience and also that kind of higher order uh, level of questioning, as Roderick said there. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I would go for these two, two and four. Um, we're actually going to have a go. Um, today we're going to try uh, one of these questions and we are going to actually answer question number two. I think it's the most accessible question there. So question number two is what forms of entertainment do you enjoy and which ones don't interest you at all? Um, so I'm going to ask now uh, Kitty, could you please put that question into the chat box for me? Question number two. So what forms of entertainment do you enjoy? Which ones don't interest you at all? And what I'm going to do now is I am going to put you into breakout rooms and I'm going to give you about five minutes, four or five minutes to discuss this question. Okay, so Kitty's put that in the chat box there so we can see it. What forms of entertainment do you enjoy? Which ones don't interest you at all and why? Um, you can talk about any kinds of entertainment that you like. Um, maybe before we go, um, a good idea actually to help, uh, to help your students before they start is to maybe brainstorm and think about some different types of entertainment that we could use. So actually, before I put you into the breakout rooms, um, let's have a quick go here. So I, I'd like you, um, please, if you have access to the annotate tool, which you'll be able to find in your menu, um, I'd like you to go to annotate and you can either take the text tool or the writing tool and I'd like you to write different types of entertainment that um, that we could discuss okay so um, the one that we're the one that we've got um, that we saw earlier uh, in the picture um, I will write it here so this is theater so we've got here TV someone's drawn a TV thank you Bobby okay that's very nice okay um, can we have a few more Right, so we've got movies, TV, theatre. Let's get a few more up there. Blogs. Okay, interesting. Okay, blogs. That's one that doesn't normally come up. So that's a great, great idea. Live music, uh, a concert, musicals. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to put up there, I'm going to put, uh, sport up there. I think that's also um, something that a lot of people enjoy for entertainment. Um, so yeah, I think it's a nice idea to get some uh, to get some ideas uh, up first. Okay, to help students. Someone's put games, right? Okay, so computer games, video games. That's a great idea. Um, okay, so it's getting a little bit messy now. Okay, but we <laughs> hopefully we've got a few ideas. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I am going to put you into your, um, I'm going to put you into your, uh, your breakout room so you can discuss. So once again, here are the questions in the chat box. What forms of entertainment do you enjoy? Which ones don't interest you at all? And remember, when you're discussing this in your group, um, I want you to give a justification. Okay, so make sure you say why. Um, I'm going to put you into groups of four. And what I would be very happy if you could do is just discuss for a few minutes. Please, uh, in your group, unmute if you can, so you can discuss. If you can't unmute, please can you make sure that you at least type into the chat box so you can still take part in the conversation. Okay, so does everybody understand what I want you to do? I'm going to put you into the room to discuss for five minutes and then bring you back, okay? So can you just type into the chat box if you understand the task? Annie says, yes, sir. 
Okay, so this, you, will, you will find there will either be three or four of you in your, in your room. Okay, here we go. So five minutes. And I'm just going to set, yes, five minutes. Okay, here we go. Let's go automatic. You should go automatically into the room. If you don't go automatically into the room, you just need to click the button that says go to room. Okay, off we go. Okay, I can see most people are being transferred now into their room. Uh, Nindia, yes, I think from a mobile phone, you can also join the breakout room. If you are still here with me, um, you should be able to see a button that says join, join breakout room. So if you click on that button, join breakout room, it will take you into the room so you can join the discussion. If you are still here with me, uh, feel free to turn on your video camera and unmute yourself and we can discuss right here. We can, have, um, we can have a discussion between the nine people who are still here. So please feel free to unmute and join the discussion with me. Uh, Kathy, if you, you have just joined, I'm gonna send you into a breakout room to discuss uh, to discuss what types of entertainment you enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to send you to breakout room eight. Okay, so for those of uh, people watching the recording of this, um, so basically I've sent everyone into uh, rooms of either four or five people so that they can discuss uh, the question. So this is one way that we can get pair or group work. Um, and I'm getting more people actually joining um, the session. Uh, so I've got four people now that have just arrived late. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm clicking through Zoom, uh, a sign, and I can actually send them to a to a room, and I can see how many people are in each room. So if I find one with fewer people, at break room sixteen only has three people. So I'm going to send, uh, I'm going to send someone there. Um, so I, this way, I can keep an eye on the group sizes. So uh, Mona, I'm going to send you to break up room twelve. Okay, and this way I can make sure that I have this, you know, basically the same number of people in each room. I can also see here on my screen, I can see that I have uh, one minute, 16 seconds left before uh, the breakout rooms end. Um, so I can keep track on how long uh, I've got before the end of the activity. Um, I also have an option here to broadcast a message to everyone. So if I, if I suddenly want to send an instruction, um, I, I can type that in and that they get a, a broadcast so that they can see who, um, see what I want to tell them. Another thing I can do, I can actually, I have the option to join any room that I want. Um, and the participants, they have the option to um, to contact me, they can raise their hand or ask me a question. If they have a problem, I can then join the room. Um, I can go in there, I can uh, help them out, and then I can come back into this main room um, and see if anyone else needs help. 
so there's quite a lot of uh, you know features and flexibility that we have when we're doing this kind of activity Okay, so there's only a few seconds left, so people should be coming back into the main room any second now. So I'm closing it. And we can see people starting to come back in. I can see Leah smiling there. Okay, Arlene, okay, I can see a few nice smiling faces. Lovely to see you there. Okay, and I think I think everyone is back. Okay, wonderful. So um, I hope that you had uh, an enjoyable time. Okay, an interesting discussion. Um, can you type into the chat box? Um, was it interesting? Did did you uh, did you find out anything interesting? Window shopping. Violet says window shopping. Rajini says yes. Okay. Um, I would like um, I would like to get a volunteer um, to, for someone to to tell me. Okay, what what was discussed in their room? So if you would like to if you would like to tell me uh, what happened, can you just type into the chat box yes? Okay. So if you type yes then I'm going to pick one of you to unmute and to discuss. Okay, Bobby, I can see you, Bobby. So um, would you like to unmute? And I'd like you just to tell me a couple of things that you found out from your group discussion. Okay, uh, we had a, a, a colleague, uh, her name, not important, but she grew up playing a game called Mahjong, uh, quite Mahjong. a unique, a, a unique hard tile game, which even the Jewish people played back in the U.S. is quite fun. Um, I myself played a very fun game called Pogs, where you hit a round card and you the objective of the game is to flip it face side up. Right. Um, right. Just, thinking about it makes me smile because it's super fun. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that actually. Pogs, yeah, yeah flipping the cards. The kids used to play it yeah. in the playground when I was at school. Okay, I, so I could sit on the curb and play for four hours nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Bobby. Okay, thank you very much for your input. So it seems that in Bobby's group, um, they were talking about mostly games. So Mahjong and Pogs, both types of games that we can play, physical games. Thank you, Bobby. Um, I'm going to ask somebody else. Um, let's have, um, can we have Leah? Uh, would you yeah. like to unmute? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think we, uh, the, the, the time is very limited. So I only I uh, get information for one person and then for me for, from myself mm -hmm. so we enjoy uh, live music actually and then uh, and then for myself I enjoy also theater and also a dance so uh, based on my experience uh, I was uh, uh, attend uh, Brazil Carnival Festival that I can wow. I can watch a uh, dance also I can enjoy I can join the dance also so right. it's a it's quite uh, great experience for me wow okay thank you Leah thank you so much that's very interesting so you like live music theater and dance and I think Carnival really has kind of elements of all three, doesn't it? It's very theatrical. Yes. And um, there's obviously yeah. the music with all the drums and things like that. And obviously yeah. dancing and you can participate as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, Leah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I'm, I'm just going to limit it to two because I mean, we could do this all day and it's very interesting, but we're limited on time. Um, so thank you very much for, uh, for taking part in that breakout room activity. And thank you to Bobby and Leah for, for, um, for giving us some feedback about what was discussed. Um, I hope, um, you know, I hope you had a nice experience doing it that and I, I think that's a very nice activity to use when we're teaching online. Um, and as I actually, if you watch the recording, you will see that I was kind of discussing what was happening um, and giving a few tips on how to manage those breakout rooms um, if you are going to use them in your own classes. Okay, so um, what I, we're going to move on. I'm just going to stop sharing just for a moment, and I'm going to reshare. 
um, because I want to now move over to my classroom presentation tool, um, which I am, oh, there it is, okay, I couldn't locate it, I couldn't find it, but here it is, okay, I found it. So you should be able to see now the classroom presentation tool, um, which is basically a digital version of, uh, of our textbook with lots of other features. So um, we're going to be looking at unit nine. Um, can you just type into the chat box? Can you, can you see the classroom presentation tool? Just so I know we're looking at the right thing. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so um, you can see here that we have access to the student book and the workbook. Um, you know, so if you're teaching in the classroom, you're teaching online, um, you have all the materials that you need. And we're going to go straight into uh, unit nine because this is what we were looking at. Here's the picture. And if I zoom in here, we can see that these are the questions that we just answered, uh, the My Perspective activity. So I said that this is a, um, this is a vocabulary lesson. Um, so we're actually going to... Um, we're actually going to um, do a couple of these um, vocabulary activities. So the first one I think is a very interesting type of activity. And it's probably one that you've seen before, um, but I, I'd like to introduce a slightly different way of doing it. So it's basically um, what uh, in the UK we would call uh, odd, the odd one out. So we're looking for one which is different. Um, so we're given here uh, four different words all related to entertainment and we have to pick the one which is different. And uh, Jens has put in here TV program. Yeah, so if we wanted to choose with four words which one is different, Jens has chosen TV program. Why, uh, Jens, why do you think TV program is the one that is different? Why does it not belong in this group? Paula also says TV program. So if someone could type into the chat box, why is TV program different? Okay, great. And it says here, all of them are verbs, except this one. Uh, Arlene says it's a noun, right? So that's interesting. Um, and, and I agree with you. Um, so TV program is a noun. And broadcast, edit, and produce, these are all verbs which go into the process of making a TV program or, or, um, or showing the TV program. So we could say TV program, right? Um, and that would be the correct answer. But what I like to do here to make it more, a bit more of a critical thinking activity is to put students into groups and to encourage them to, once we've got that answer, to think of another word that could be, that could be the odd one out. So um, you all said verbs and noun, right? But if we look at the word broadcast, so broadcast is a verb, is it a noun as well? Can we have a, bra a broadcast? Yes. How about edit? Um, you know, if we're, if we're editing something, can we have a, first, a second edit, a third edit? We can, right? So actually, TV program, edit, and broadcast, uh, sorry, um, yeah, TV program, edit, and broadcast, they can all be nouns. So another word that could be the odd one out would be the word, someone put it earlier, um, Roderick put the, the word produce. So the word produce okay actually although saying that um the word produce can also be a noun but produce yeah it could be a noun in a different context that's right so um produce could be uh, an uncountable noun right so we could say that a broadcast an edit and a tv program these are all countable nouns um produce meaning perhaps things that you buy yeah agricultural produce this could be an uncountable noun so we can get our students, you know, using a dictionary um, to try and think uh, in a slightly more sophisticated level. And, um, you know, we can give them points so we can make this a team game and we can really encourage kind of creative thinking to see what kind of answers they come up with. Um, let's have a go at a couple more. Um, how about number two here? So we've got audience, we've got characters, listeners and viewers. Um, so let's see, what do we think about this one? Which one do we think is the odd one out here? Okay, so most of you put in characters. So why is characters the odd one out? So uh, someone's put here the receiver. 
Okay, so characters, they are the ones in the performance, right? The characters are actually part of the entertainment. The other three, audience, listeners, and viewers, they are the ones receiving, okay, or watching or listening. So they are the ones enjoying the performance, whereas the characters are actually um, in the performance, right? They're the actors, that's right. Um, I did notice someone earlier on, someone put audience, Ranjini. Okay, well done, Ranjini. So Ranjini, um, who, I know, <laughs> who I know works uh, with language a lot, um, she has gone for the word audience is different because it's an uncountable noun. There we go. So that would be another way of differentiating them. Um, it's uncountable. Actually, um, that's interesting. So another way we could look at this audience, it, it is uncountable because there's no S, but is, is the word audience, is it talking about, is it singular or is it plural? Right, someone's got it here. They said it's a collective noun, right? So it's a collective noun or a group noun. So the word audience is also talking about um, a group of people, but it is a collective or group noun so that we don't need to put an S on it. Uh, Roderick says we can say audiences. I mean, Roderick, you're right. Um, as with most uncountable nouns, we can add an S if we're talking about different types of audience. So if you were perhaps um, in advertising, you could be talking about uh, one certain audience that you were trying to att attract and not this other audience, okay, who are not relevant to you. And these are two different audiences, that's right. But the word audience itself is this collective noun, okay, whereas the others are not. Okay, perfect, that's great. So I think characters is the answer that, um, the, the answer that the, that the book wants you to get. Um, let's try another one. How about number three? So you've got theater, musical, performance, a play, and a production. Okay, Kathy says theater. Okay, Michael says play, only word that is not three syllables. That is amazing. And that is exactly the kind of thinking that I would be trying to encourage, Michael. Um, and that is probably one that not many people would get. Um, so, yeah, play is the odd one out. Uh, it can be the odd one out because it's only one syllable. Theatre is the odd one out because... Why are most of you putting theatre? Can someone explain why? Location. Right, okay, so theatre is a, is a place, it is a location, right? Um, it's not a type of show, the other four are types of show, right? Um, there we go, so theatre is also an odd one out. Um, I've noticed one here, what about the, the spelling of theatre? What do you notice about the spelling of theatre? It's British English, right. So this would be another way we could differentiate it. So theatre is the only one of these words which has different spelling for British English and American English. That would be another way to differentiate it. Um, I think I had one more that I thought of earlier. Right, I thought of one with collocation. Okay, think about the, the, the phrasal verb put on. Okay, put on. And which, uh, there's only one of these words here that does not match, does not collocate with the phrasal verb put on. So which one is it? So we can say, for example, to put on a play. Okay, it means to organize, set up and perform, put on a play. Uh, which one of these can we not match or collocate with put on? And Feli says you can't put on a theater and you're absolutely right. So theater we can put a uh, kathy we can put on a production yes you can put on a production put on a play put on a performance and put on a musical but you cannot put on a theater okay you put on a production in a theater okay so there we go so there's a lot of different ways that we can differentiate and i think it's a fun way uh you know to get students thinking creatively to get them thinking critically um, as Michael pointed out earlier by saying play only has one syllable, there are many different ways that we can differentiate uh, between these things. And yeah, I think it's a really nice activity. They could even look at how many letters there are, particular sounds, you know, which one, maybe only one of them. They all have an E apart from one of them. So yeah, a lot of different ways we can do this. Uh, we're not going to do all of them because time is of the essence, but I think you get, you get the general idea of this kind of activity. Okay, so let's move on to the next activity here. 
Um, so after we've gone through all of these words, uh, the next activity we can see here, number three. Um, let's see if I can uh, zoom in a bit to make it a bit clearer. Um, I just show you that we have another way of uh, zooming here. So I can actually uh, draw a box around this so I can make it nice and big so everyone can see it. So activity three is we're going to look at all those words we just looked at and we're going to categorize them. So again, this is another task which is involving um, a certain amount of critical thinking because we need to understand the meaning of the word and the context that they are used in. Um, so I'm going to now uh, give a new share. I'm going to go for my screen share. Um, so you should be able to see um, my Word document. Okay, so uh, can you just type into the chat box for me? Can you see the Word document up on the screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, so um, this is what we're asking them to do. Um, we're asking them to categorize. Um, so I've put all the words that they would have looked at and then I've made this very simple table. Um, and if we take the first word, which is broadcast, and I can copy it, um, can you tell me which of these categories would you put the word broadcast under? So would you categorize that under art, under music, theater? So uh, people are putting TV. Okay, so let's put that okay, under TV. And people are also putting radio. Right, so I'm going to put that under TV and radio. Um, and you're right, it is TV and radio. Now, this might be confusing for some people because when we broadcast on TV, we can broadcast anything. So we can broadcast music uh, or radio. Let's say we broadcast music on the radio. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're broadcasting, you know, that we use broadcast in that context to talk about music. We don't. We use broadcast in the context of the radio. So although we can say we're broadcasting music it's the medium that we're really interested in here and that is why broadcast matches with radio so um, we need to make sure that students understand uh, these kind of finer details which are going to help them to use these words later which is the most important thing um, all of these activities are designed to get students to understand at a deeper level so that they have the skills the tools they need to actually use the vocabulary so let's do another one um, how about edit? Okay, so where, where would you like me to put edit? Okay, Francis says TV, uh, music. Okay, let's put it. Okay, so when we're doing music, okay, so maybe we make, uh, we, we make something and then we, yeah, we edit it to, make, to uh, you know, to get it to the place we want. Uh, you also edit TV, as someone mentioned earlier. Um, so probably music and TV. I think if we're talking about art, um, we certainly edit um, when we're talking about uh, books, okay, and writing. I'm not sure I would use the word edit to talk about a painting or something like that. Um, I think in a radio program, yeah, I think we would edit that. So first they would record it and then they would, if it's a recorded broadcast, they would edit it. So I think probably these three we would edit, but certainly not for live theatre. We can't edit that. Um, and yeah, I think really not for art either. Um, but we can see that it's being used across these three different mediums. Let's do one more. Okay, we'll do produce. Okay, um, as the verb. And so where am I going to put produce? Can you help me out for produce? You certainly produce music. Um, so you have a music producer. You certainly produce TV and you also have a television producer. So uh, music, TV, in fact, all of them. Yeah, I think maybe we do produce all of these. Um, to produce a piece of art, yeah, I think maybe we could put this one for all of them, right? Um, you put a, a theater production, so it's a production, so it certainly has uh, a producer as well, and for radio. So I think probably we would put this one across all of them. Um, yeah, so this activity, we get students perhaps to do it on their own first. They can have a go thinking about it first. I think if you give them the chart first, um, this helps them to do it. And then once they've done it, they can discuss together. And then you, you might find that there are disagreements about which words can go where. And then after the students have had a chance to do that, the teacher can then go through it together and we can discuss any issues that we have. Um, and as I said, this is really just to get down to help them understand the meaning and the usage of the word.
Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there and we're going to go back into my, we're going to go back into here, into the CPTs. We've got about 15 minutes left. Okay, so let's have a look. We're going to have a go at exercise four as well. And I think that will be all the time that we have, uh, all of uh, all the, the activities we have time for today. Um, so let's, um, let, I need to pick the right tool here. I need to move my, my zoom bar out of the way, which is completely in the way, get my pointer. Okay, and another activity, again, which I think is really nice just to dial in that meaning to help students understand. So let's have a look. The activity this time, again, we're looking at words that they've already studied. Now, we didn't look at these because they were further down the list, um, but these are all words that they've just studied. And they have to choose from uh, which word to use in the context of a sentence. So let's have a look. It says, I love the, and then we've got verses or lyrics of this song because they say what I'm feeling. Now, both of these words are similar because they're both talking about the words that we find in a song but we need to choose which one is more likely and we need to justify why we are using it. So what do you think? Are we gonna go for verses or lyrics? Okay, Leah, Francis, um, everyone's going for the word lyrics. Um, and I think you're right. Um, verses sounds like a poem, right? So yes, a verses does sound like a poem, um, but a verse is actually in a song, you have two kinds of lyrics. You have the verse and you also have the chorus. Okay, so the chorus is the bit that is repeated. So if we, if we choose verses here, um, it sounds strange because it sounds that you, like you are not, you're only talking about half of the song. Um, so it sounds a little bit unusual to pick, oh, I like the verses of this song because they say what I'm feeling. Um, you might pick out one particular verse. Uh, this verse particularly says what I'm feeling, but it sounds strange to kind of differentiate half of the lyrics of the song. So it's just much more common to talk about the lyrics of the song in general. Um, verses is for, verses for poetry, but it's also for music as well. Um, okay, so this is why for the first one, because we're talking about all of the lyrics, not just part. Let's have a look at number two. She's planning a large, and then we've got here, sculpture and mural. Okay, so this is, again, it's a word that was in the vocabulary. We didn't look at it. Um, a large something to decorate the side of the hospital. So Francis says it is mural. Uh, Leah, Jens, he's going for mural. Um, and I agree, it is mural. Um, why? Arlene says mural. So why are we going to pick mural here and not sculpture? Can anyone help me? Right, so it is art on the wall. That is right. So um, yeah, it says his side of the hospital. So Jens says a sculpture is three-dimensional. Right, a sculpture is three-dimensional. So, you know, we... I mean, you could put it on the side of the hospital, but you don't usually put a sculpture like hanging on the side. Usually a sculpture is kind of standing on its own. Um, so I think because it is the side of the hospital, it's suggesting we're covering the whole area. And that is exactly what a mural is. A mural is a painting on a wall. So the side of the hospital helps us with that. Um, let's try one more. So the president made a 10 minute now we've got broadcast or we've got production to explain the economic situation. So what do we think for this one? Okay, so we're going for broadcast. That's right, broadcast. Um, yeah, so this is something, um, you know, that I, I, I agree with you here. I think it's broadcast. Um, if we're looking at um, the reason why, I mean, 10, to make a broadcast, um, this is something that collocates, okay, we can say you make a broadcast. Um, do we say make a production? Does that sound right to you? To make a production? Do we feel that is something, the key word is explain, so it should be the broadcast. Okay, there we go, that's a good point. 
okay, uh, Jennifer. So um, a broadcast is usually something, uh, well, it, means, it just means to send out. A production is something which is staged, right? In fact, the collocation is to stage a production, right? Or to put on a production. So it's not something that's real life in general, okay? Production is something that is, uh, usually it's fiction, it's something that is produced, it's something that is fiction. So the broadcast here, because it's uh, the president, because it's economic situation, we want something that is talking about real life. Um, just while um, I'm talking about these two, I would like to show you uh, something else that I think it's important to do. And to do this, I'm going to go into my, I'm going to go into the dictionary here. Um, and yeah, just to show you that, and um, this is obviously something very useful uh, for students. Um, is to, oh, I just typed that in wrong. Um, I meant to put in production. Um, so if we look at production and we go down the list here and we go to number four, um, we can say here a production is a type of film or play or broadcast, there we go, or broadcast that is prepared for the public, okay, the act of preparing a film, etc. Um, we can also see here, um, I was mentioning the collocation, so we can see we talk about staging a production, uh, we can talk about um, going into production, okay, but if we look here, we can't see, there's no example of making a production. Um, so I think, you know, showing our uh, students the dictionary um, to help them go in there and look at these examples, this is going to help them to understand on a deeper level. Um, if we go and have a quick look at the word broadcast, Okay, and then we can go to noun over here. Um, there we go. And you can see straight away here, we've got party political broadcast, um, a broadcast of a speech. So just going in and having a look, we can see that a president making, uh, making a broadcast is going to be really one of these. It's going to be political. Um, it's going to be a type of speech. Um, it's news. Okay, so we can see that the way that broadcast is used, um, media here, um, net journalism. So it, we can see from the examples that it really links into that and it's going to help students to understand it better. Okay, we're just going to do finish them off, do two more. Okay, so more than 5 million. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So we've got here viewers or listeners. So which one do we think is the right answer? 5 million viewers or 5 million listeners? Uh, Minnie says viewers. Uh, why is it viewers? This is an easier one because it's watch, right? Okay, so a viewer, it literally means to watch, right? And the last one, she works in a small, we've got gallery and studio. Um, so this one potentially is difficult as well. Um, you know, you can have a small gallery, you can work in a gallery, you can work in a studio. Um, Kathy says it's studio. Why, Kathy, uh, why is it studio? Why, why is it not gallery? Probably not. Does, can anyone tell me why a studio is smaller? It, yes, it, it might be, but it doesn't have to be smaller, uh, I guess. So there is a reason why. Um, and again, if we go back to the dictionary, if I type in here studio, okay, and we go down. Um, if I go down to here, so this is the meaning that we're looking for, number four. So a studio is the room where an artist works. And yes, yeah, studio is personal, right? There we go. It's garden. So the key word here is garden. And we can see that studio is often associated with a house or a home. So it's very common for someone to have a studio, an artist studio that they can work in at home. But it's extremely unusual for someone to have a gallery, which is somewhere for the general public to come and see art. So if we if we look up gallery, we will see it's generally for student uh, for the general public. Um, so again, by looking at the dictionary here, we're really going to um, yeah, define the meaning and help them to understand. So I think the dictionary skills here are something that I would like to emphasize every time you're teaching vocabulary, you need to go in and look at that. All right. Now, um, we don't have time to do the whole lesson. I'll just there. There is another activity here, which I will just show you. Um, the sort of final couple of activities in this lesson. Um, first one um, 
is basically matching collocation. You're, you're giving sentence stems and then you're matching these words into the sentences. And the last activity um, is another choice activity where students then choose some of these sentence stems, make sentences about themselves, about personalization, and then discuss. So we've got a nice kind of cycle. We start the, the lesson with personalization and discussion, and we come full circle. And at the end, we have personalization and discussion again. All right, now let me go back into my, uh, let me go back here into my PowerPoint and we'll just quickly finish off the session. Okay, so I'm just going to give you um, just a little bit of information about what we've been looking at today. So uh, this is perspectives. Um, as you can see here from this slide, um, perspectives has National Geographic content. Uh, so very interesting sort of articles and readings. And it also has content from TED Talks, which I haven't mentioned yet. And uh, the TED Talk, um, they're very carefully um, broken down into stages, into sections, usually three or four. Um, they're carefully analysed and this all means that students are well supported um, so that they can, they can understand the TED Talks because they're not graded. They are at, uh, you know, the original, they're the original TED Talks, the language is not graded at all. We can see that Perspectives is um, four levels from pre-intermediate to advanced or from A2 to a C1 level. Um, it is aimed at students, uh, young adults, so from 16 plus. Uh, it's perfect, as I mentioned earlier, for kind of upper secondary or for university. Uh, this is an integrated four skills program. And um, it, it's kind of uh, the whole point about perspectives, as is, meant, as is suggested by the name, it picks one theme and then it approaches that theme from different angles. Um, or different perspectives. So it's giving, encouraging students to think differently about topics which maybe they are familiar with, but only think about in, from a narrow point of view, or maybe topics they've never thought about before. Um, the aim of this program is to get students to develop an open mind, a critical eye, and a clear voice. So I'm just gonna uh, explain a little bit. So by open mind, um, what we are talking about is being exposed to new ideas, new opinions, and new perspectives. By critical eye, it's linked to critical thinking. Uh, we saw this earlier on in the vocabulary exercises. And perspective encourages students to think, to challenge assumptions, to question things, and to not take everything at face value. So to look beneath the surface. And a clear voice means that we want them to be able to express. So once they've got their ideas, we want to be able to express them clearly so that other people understand. And uh, Feli has typed in, we've started teaching perspectives and I really, really enjoy it so far. Um, yeah, and as Kitty said, that is fantastic for us to know. You know, I, th I think it's a wonderful program and um, it's wonderful to know uh, that teachers like Feli are also really enjoying using it in the classroom. Okay, so um, just very quickly on the components. Okay, so what do we have available? So for students, there is a student book, there is an ebook. We also have this available in combo split, which means uh, half of the book. Um, they also have a workbook and an online workbook, which comes with a learning management system. So the teacher can assign, uh, give assignments, grade, um, mark all their work online, check performance and things like that. For the teachers, you have a very detailed lesson planner. You have the classroom presentation tool that I showed you earlier. Um, which is all of the student material, student book material and workbook material. And you also have this um, exam view software, which allows you to create, um, you know, custom made tests and exams for units and for the whole, for the whole level, um, really at a few, few clicks of a button. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to ask, are there any questions that anyone would like to ask? Even We don't have a lot of time, but please uh, type into the chat box if you have any questions for me about perspectives or about the lesson today. Kitty has just put into the chat box here. There's a few websites here. So the first one is um, the, our webinar page. You can, uh, you can actually find 
um, access to all of our past webinars and you can register for future webinars here. There's our Facebook page, so please go and follow us on Facebook. Um, and you can find out lots of information about, um, you know, what we're doing, events that we're holding. And the last one is um, the YouTube, which also has all of our recordings on. Arlene says, are there writing activities? Yes, there are. So Perspectives is a uh, four skills program. So every unit has, um, has writing activities and um, they are focused on uh, a variety of different writing types. And uh, yeah, there, there are very, very strong uh, writing activities, Arlene. Uh, very structured, yeah. Um, any other final questions? Um, while we're waiting, I, I'm gonna mention there is a certificate of participation, which we will, uh, you'll be get, have access to tomorrow. So tomorrow we will send a follow-up email and in that follow-up email, there is a survey and it's a very short survey. I think there are six questions. If you complete the survey, when you finished it, you will be able to download your certificate straight from the survey. You can put your own name in it and then you can do whatever you like with that certificate once you have it. But you will get that tomorrow in an email. Okay, so do the survey, you'll get the certificate. I've got another question here. How can we use more than 150 projects from learn.org? Um, I'm sorry, Min, I'm not really sure what you mean there. Can you explain your question a little bit more in the chat box? And I'll come back to that. Um, Bobby says, what level could you compare perspectives to the Cambridge level PET FCE? Um, well, um, it depends on the level. So um, uh, I think PET, I would have to check. Um, I think PET is the same as B1. I think, or was it B2? And FCE would be the same as A1. Okay, so that would be, uh, so FCE would be the level four. And I think PET would be level two. Um, so basically the four levels that we have on perspectives, it basically goes from, uh, well, high A2 through to C1. So um, each level would broadly match a different Cambridge level exam. Okay, um, Roderick says, do these books come with rubrics for assessment forms? Um, Roderick, I, 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 I'm not 100% sure with that, I would have to check. Um, on the, on the um, companion site, there are a lot of materials for assessment. Um, maybe I can have a look right now. Um, Let's see. So if I go into here, I can have a look at teacher resources, level two. Um, exam view. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sure if it does have the rubrics or not, Roderick. It, so, some of our programs do and some of them don't. So it's something that I would have to double check for you. Um, Roderick, if you send if you send me an email, then I can I can follow up with you um, and and get you that information. Okay, let's see if we got any other questions. Uh, Yasmin saying, is it uh, why why do we not write the names on the certificates? Um, it, it's Yasmin. The reason is because th there are too many people for us to do that. So it's it's just going to take us um, a lot of time. So we made the decision uh, to let you to let you do that by yourself. Okay. So I hope that's okay. Um, okay. And I think we've run out of time really. So um, let me just um, yeah go back to my slides here. I just want to mention we have another. Uh, another exciting webinar coming up next week. So Kitty um, is going to be doing uh, this webinar uh, based on our program Explorations. And it's all about how uh, jo this man Joel Satori is uh, his project to try and save endangered animals. Uh, Kitty, is there anything you would like to say about that? No, I'll leave it as a surprise. Leave it as <laughs> a surprise, okay. Yeah. Yeah, keep, okay. Keep, yeah. keep, them, keep them engaged and wondering what's yeah. going to happen. 
Uh, okay, so thank you very it, much. It's everyone. for it's for it's a young learner program. So it's uh, to uh, probably students about uh, eight or nine years old. Okay, perfect. There we go. So please thank join you. us next week. Um, you can sign up um, on our webinar page that Kitty put in the chat box earlier. You will also receive that email tomorrow with your certificate. Uh, you will also receive a link to sign up for Kitty's webinar next week. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, I, I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, I will stay online. Um, I'm going to end the webinar now and I'm going to stop recording, but I will stay online for another 10 minutes or so if there are other questions that you have.